Hello my fellow tech aficionados and welcome back to the channel. The launch and therefore all the juicy review its and bits for Nvidia's new desktop flagship are right around the corner and my colleagues from the website are busy testing these absolute monsters. Unfortunately I won't be able to do any launch coverage, however I plan to cover the desktop side a bit more during 2025 and I hope to be able to do a more creative focused comparison of the 4090 against its shiny new sibling quite soon. But to do that I need a system in which I can test and also use Nvidia's Blackwell flagship and Asus was kind enough to send over a few goodies to help us out in this regard. And by the way this is not sponsored or anything, but since it's been quite a while for me since I got to play with desktop hardware and I'm actually quite a big fan of this system I thought why not do a quick video about it. I would also really like to hear from you guys what you would want us to cover in our final video. So if you have any special use cases in mind sound off below and I will see if I can implement them in our testing. But with that out of the way let's talk about this absolute unit of a desktop PC. So let's start with the most obvious right away, the case. As you can see Asus sent over their almost complete lineup of ProArt Creator goodies, all of which are housed in the PA602, a simply massive yet very subtle E80X enclosure. This one will definitely not have any problems fitting the Founders Edition 5090 and should even be big enough for even the most overbuilt third party variants. And with two massive 200mm fans in the front, airflow should also not really be a problem at all. Add in a ton of space for SSDs, hard drives and very generous front I.O. and this makes for a very good overall platform for our new video editing workstation. At the top you also have ample space for all sorts of fan and radiator shenanigans and in our case, pun intended, we opted for a 360mm AIO, also with the ProArt printing to cool our Intel Aero Lake Core Ultra 9 to 85K. I just updated everything to the latest BIOS versions, so I'm quite curious how the chip handles both for creator workflows as well as gaming. Because you bet, if I have a 5090 at my disposal, I'm going to play games on it. Team Blue's latest desktop flagship sits on the simply gorgeous looking ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi. And if there ever was a mainboard that simply has it all, it's this one. For example, not only do you have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port for fast network environments, but the ProArt is also one of the very, very few boards with an additional 10 gigabit jack, which allows me to use my 10 gigabit Ethernet server to instantly access our complete archive of footage. With a pair of Thunderbolt 5s and a single Thunderbolt 4, you are also ready for whatever is to come in the future with super fast peripherals. And with a total of 6 USBs back here as well, you should be covered for even the most advanced setups. Besides the CPU, our system runs with 32GB of memory and a 1TB SSD, which I would definitely upgrade should I be able to use it longer than for our initial 5090 coverage. When it comes to those upgrades, ASUS added a few creature comforts, especially in the storage department. To add additional NVMe drives, you can now remove the GPU by just tilting it towards the front of the case. That's right, you no longer have to fumble around the case to reach for the PCIe locking mechanism, which is definitely a godsend, especially if you use larger GPUs and an air cooler for example. The heatsink for the SSDs is also accessible without any tools required. But that's not it, since even mounting your shiny new SSDs is done in a heartbeat. And while it does not sound like a killer feature, it makes building and maintaining your workstation that much easier and much more streamlined. In the GPU department, this one is rocking a ProArt 4060 for now, which is more of a placeholder to be honest to get everything up and running. And I really hope I will be able to get my hands on a 4090 as well to make a direct comparison with a 5090 for all of my use cases. That said, I hope ASUS will update their ProArt cards to the new generation as well, since I really like the understated design of these GPUs. If you need a refresher for the 4080, we did a mini ITX system a while ago and I will put the link somewhere up here. That covers this system for now and when it comes to all of our creator stuff you may have also seen the screen I have been using over the past few months in some of our recent videos. It's also from ASUS's ProArt lineup and it's actually a 32 inch 4K mini LED panel that can reach some pretty insane brightness levels should you be into HDR mastering. 
For me, the main selling point is the fact that this one can self-calibrate though, enabling me to work with accurate colors no matter which machine I'm using to drive it and it's really helped me to keep our color grading consistent for all of our videos. It's a pretty expensive piece of tech, but if you are doing anything color critical and want that peace of mind that everything is right on your end, well, it's hard to put a price tag on that. Speaking of pricey tech, I'll do my very best to put together links for everything I was talking about in the description. These will be affiliate links, so we will get a small kickback should you use them to buy anything. And your support here is greatly appreciated. Alright folks, that should cover everything for now. Please let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. And again, if you have anything in mind we usually do not cover in our testing, also let us know. Thanks a ton for watching, I hope you guys are as excited as I am about the new generation of GPUs. And please make sure to like this video and subscribe so you won't miss any of our upcoming coverage. As always, my name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care.